Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas, and today we're here to talk about HP Reliant DL380 Gen 6 server memory upgrades and how to load the, the system. For starters, the HP Reliant DL380 Gen 6 has 18 DIMM slots and accepts one type of memory, ECC registered, also known as RDIMMs. It does not accept load reduced memory, also known as LRDIMMs, that's accepted by HP in its 8th gen servers. So as far as the uh, maximum capacity, uh, according to HP's spec sheet, uh, you can use 288 gigabytes via 18, 16 gigs at a total of uh, 1600 megahertz. However, we've done some tinkering and played around and found out you can actually use 384 gigabytes if you put in 1232 gigs. And, you, and the reason you can only put in uh, 1232 gigs as opposed to say putting in 18 and filling up all the slots is that uh, something called the rank rule. And if you're not familiar with the rank rule, uh, it simply states that uh, for each memory channel, you can only put a total of eight ranks and all DDR332 gigs are quad rank. Uh, and it basically just runs into a math issue where you can only use a total of 12 DIMMs, uh, two DIMMs per slot. And we'll, we'll touch base a little bit further on that uh, when we actually open the machine up and show you uh, the different channels. I think it's gonna be a little bit easier to explain. So uh, let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, take a look at the inside. Uh, the G6, unfortunately, is a little bit tougher to open than uh, some of the other systems that are out there. Um, so let's uh, make sure we got our ESD gear on and get rolling. Now that we're fully protected with all of our ESD gear, uh, I'll show you how to open the uh, DL380 Gen 6. Uh, it's a little bit dip more difficult than some of the other machines. The G7 is uh, much easier to get into. So first things first, you need to always make sure that the latch is set to unlock. Simply pop it open and voila, you are in. Now, however, there is a riser on top um, that kind of covers everything that will prevent you from being able to remove the air baffle. Uh, so what you're gonna have to do is basically uh, knock out a couple of screws. So you have this one up front, you have two up front, and then you have three in the back. Sometimes people miss the middle one. And then, these two clips right here come down, okay? Um, after that's done, you simply pop these open, and then there's these little latches right here that you pull up. Be careful because there is a PC riser board on here that is inserted, so you kind of want to come directly up as opposed to pulling to the side or pulling back. You could, you could easily uh, accidentally bend the leads um, and then the next thing that you will do uh, is simply remove the air baffle or air shroud. You'll notice that there are some cables on the right side, so you do need to be careful. Uh, it does pop right up, um, so you just pull it. You can, if you want, you can technically take the uh, the RAID cabling out, uh, but for the sake of time, I personally just pull it out and kind of toss it to the left a little bit so that the cabling back here is still all intact and everything is fine. Um, so uh, you can see right now, this machine uh, has six, uh, four gigs. It's really, I mean, it's nothing powerful at all. It's only got 24 gigs. So a local customer actually brought this by and wanted us to pop in um, 18, 16 gigs for them. So we'll do that in a second. Uh, so I wanted to show you a couple of things. So you will notice uh, that there are two CPUs. Uh, you know, one CPU will control nine, um, dim slots and the other CPU2 will control the other nine dim slots. So if you only have one CPU in, for instance, then you would only be using one side of the board. Nothing up here will register. Um, just throwing out some obvious stuff, but just in case you're running into these issues, uh, might be helpful. So you will notice, as we said, there are nine dims per CPU. So what that basically uh, translates to for this system is there are three uh, dims per memory channel, and there are also three memory channels as a whole. Uh, so you will notice by HP's coloring that the first dim in the channel is white, and it goes white, black, black, white, black, black, white, black, black, okay? So uh, right now, the way that it's loaded, because it only has uh, three dims, each one goes into the white slot. So if you were not maxing it out, and you only need to put in a few dims, you just need to make sure you start at the beginning of the channel, okay? Um, in this case, we're actually going to be removing them and loading it up and going from 24 gigs to 288 gigs. So it's going to be a pretty massive increase in performance overall for this customer. Uh, so I'm going to pull them out. And one thing to note, um, 
it has latches on both sides. I personally like to have one hand holding the module and the other doing the latches because just like that, it just flicks it up a little bit uh, and you don't want it to pop up and then come back down and damage a lead. So you just simply kind of just keep it controlled and pull them out. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do now is load up some 16 gig modules. I'll show you how easy that is. So first things first, I would like to note, uh, if you look at this module right here, uh, there is a, a notch in the middle, which is also known as a key. Uh, that key uh, is important if you were trying to put in, let's say, DDR2 memory or DDR4 memory, it physically would not fit into the slots, uh, which is obviously a good thing because you don't want to damage your board or damage the modules. So the manufacturers have made um, the, the keys in different spots to prevent people from just, you know, user errors, right? Uh, also, if you were to try to put in, say, a desktop DIMM, uh, which, you know, people have tried this in the past, uh, they might get a unbuffered module and think that it'll work, and it, it does not, I'll tell you this. Um, but again, the keys uh, will not line up, okay? So, so some simple things that I just want to note for everybody, all right? So I'm going to show you how easy it is to put in. The, the notch is lined up perfectly. Okay. I like to push, you have to push a little bit gently, but sometimes it doesn't go in full and you need it to latch all the way. Okay, and you'll hear that click. It's a nice, strong click, okay? And I always recommend also make sure that you are using matching modules and you do need to use major brands. Uh, it doesn't have to be HP branded. In fact, I don't recommend HP branded because all HP does is uh, buy memory from some of the other major brands, Samsung and Hynix and Micron, and then put on an HP sticker and charge you more. <laughs> um, so, I, but I do recommend those manufacturers, HP, Hynix, and Micron, all great manufacturers. Uh, so you can see how easy it is. We can load up a whole uh, side of this board in a matter of a couple of minutes, and it's just going to be such a massive increase uh, in performance. And I know, so this customer is actually using it for file sharing, which really won't need this uh, type of performance anyways. Uh, but he could use it for some pretty awesome stuff if he wanted to do some virtualization or uh, wanted to do, you know, a couple of more, more complicated data type ap applications, he would be able to actually utilize this. So, okay, for sake of time, I don't want to continue to uh, show you how to do just putting in modules. That's pretty simple. Uh, so we'll just assume I've already filled it up and I want to show you how to put it back together because again, this system is kind of a pain getting in and out of. Um, so I'm going to rotate the air baffle back over, get everything lined up here. Got to keep the cables to the side because they're kind of in the way. All right. Now the riser, this is the fun part. Okay. So the riser, person, the way that I like to do it, um, what I'm most concerned about is uh, the leads getting put in properly and not damaging the system. So I like to personally get it high level and I'll just make sure that it goes in just properly and everything is lined up just right. All right, perfect. Okay, so now that it's in, you actually have to kind of give it a little push right there. You hear it click, uh, pop the tabs back in, put the screws back in, tabs back up. Okay, one more screw and we are done. All right, so just that easy. Simply put the top back on and voila, we are back in business. So first of all, thank you for stopping by to learn a little bit more about uh, memory upgrades for the HP ProLiant DL380 Gen 6. If you have uh, any questions or there's anything that uh, you need to upgrade for your system, please uh, reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And I appreciate your time.